Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out what Chris and I are up to. So in today's video, I am bringing you a, which has turned into be a weekly thrift haul and makeover video. So I share with you what I have thrifted throughout the week going into secondhand thrift stores. And then at the end of the video, if I have items to make over, I share the process and my vision with you all of what I do to these items to get them ready to resell. And I resell here locally. I have a couple retail booths at a local antique mall. And we have been doing a little bit of eBay selling little by little. We're working at it. My son is in charge of that. So um, I try to do a community post shout out on YouTube here to let you know when I have added new items onto the eBay. So these are the items that I have found throughout the week of going in. Now this this week was a little bit unusual. The last few thrift hauls I've shared with you, I've had really good luck finding items. And there was actually a few times that I left a thrift shop and left and that I left empty handed. And how sad does it make you? But it just happens if I, I can't force it. If I don't have a vision for the item, I have to leave it behind. So let me share with you what I found. Well, I'll share one item with you right off the bat. Um, me and my son visited a couple garage sales and this is all I <laughs> this is all I found for a dollar. I out of three garage sales that are just starting, yes, this is I got a dollar brush, but I'm very happy with it. <laughs> As you if you saw my cabinet um makeover that I got from the viewer Kelly, that yes, I I like decorating with these. So I don't know if I'm gonna keep this one or um resell it, but it was a dollar. <laughs> so there you go. And my son, I think at that garage that I spent a dollar, he spent 22 bottles, 25 cents, 50 cents. He spent 50 cents. <laughs> you just, you just never know. You can't, like I said, you can't force it. So we got that at the Salvation Army. Um, I got the, oh, look at it. It's a stained glass butterfly. Now it was $2.99 and it was half off, so it was a dollar fifty. So it is stained glass. Now it has a little bit of problem that the edging is coming off, but you know I have that wonderful CA Starbond glue that I can. Yep, I'm gonna. I'll put a wire on it. It has um, a place where you can hang it. It's missing its chain or a wire, so the person can. I'll get that glue back on. But this one is not even a crack. So what a great price. So I wanted to show that right off the bat, so I could set it off to the side. <laughs> Now I did pick up, I picked up this, this was $3.29. Um, now I love the frame of it all. Um, it's just a simple little B, maybe is that what that means in that language? Um, there's a little saying behind it. I know it's painted, not my ring light. Um, the story of the artist. I just, I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love the simplicity of the leaves. I love the frame. It's got a nice hanging system on, very well thought out hanging system. So yeah, yeah, I like to have wall decor. It actually even has some bumpers on it so it's not resting against the wall. So this was, I mean, I would consider this was a very high end item. I did not look it up yet, but I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And if you know anything about it, let me know down below. So while we're going on um, things to hang up, I also picked up this. Now this is a mirror, so you're going to see some of my decor. Um, a laundry sign at the Salvation Army that day too. Um, so $2.99 this one was. Um, it just kind of caught my eye. I don't usually have a lot in my booth for the laundry room. Really nothing you have to do to it. So 
I always like to have some extra in my inventory in case I have an empty space on my pegboard, my walls in my booths. So nobody wants empty space ever. There's not, you know, you just don't want empty space. For 10 at 29 at Goodwill, I picked, I know the prices are going up. There's nothing you can do guys. So for 10.29, I love these little owls. They are tea lights. Um, so they're tea lights. <laughs> and um, yeah, I could just envision painting these black and just sealing it in and calling it good. I don't think I'd put any patina or anything on, the, on them. I like the simplicity that you could put the little tea lights in them and then they would glow or just black, black metal just sells well for me. So that is exactly what I, I would do. Now I have a little story about these and the laundry sign um and then actually the little brush we can say i just happened in the last couple days i had a lady drive in from cleveland to buy one of my suitcase and tables um contact me via email we had it all set up at hog creek that she could pick it up so and then later that afternoon um, I ran into her at Goodwill and <laughs> I actually picked this up. So that was, uh, that was what a nice God wink moment that I got to actually meet her that she drove in from Cleveland, which I, what well, I'm not even sure how many hours away, but it was very nice to get to meet her. And then like the laundry sign at the Salvation Army, I got to meet another viewer. And then when we had, um, went into that garage sale, we stopped at a little, little local, thrift shop in that little town and I got to meet another viewer. So that was just humbling to know that people are out and about locally watching our channel. So thank you all. You know who you are for saying something to me when we're out and about. So I just had to share that with you all. We really do appreciate each and every one of you. And when you say something, it's just very humbling. So, okay, let's get, let's get back into the hall. So there is, um, this line of I think it's, I don't know who sells it. It's Temptation Wear, um, but you can just tell it's nicely made. And I actually had thrifted a red rolling pin made of the same material on a base um, not too long ago, and that sold really well. And I noticed another lady when I was doing our Hog Creek tour that she has very nice kitchen stuff, lots of antique Pyrex and all that, and she had the Jadeite if you remember that from the video, and she had quite a bit of the temptation. Um, temptations, temptations maybe? Maybe, you know, I slaughter words, I'm sorry guys, so go ahead and correct me. But just absolutely beautiful. So this one was $4.29, so it reminds me of a, like a little bitty berry bowl. Um, uh, it's not little bitty, it's a good size. Um, that's kind of what it reminds me of. So there was this one for $4.29, and then I got this, I got this one first. Those two were together, the smaller two. This one was $4.29. Look at that little bee on there. Oh my gosh, just beautiful. So Temptotions, Temptotions. So then I already had those in my cart. And then it was one of those days where you get ready to leave the Goodwill and here they come out with another cart. And then there was this bigger one. So yeah, so same little pattern, same bee. Oh my goodness, they're just beautiful. No, oh, the butterflies on the inside of this one. So they're just beautiful. And I can always appreciate items that I don't have to do anything to other than take the tags off, clean them up. Now that they did have two more pieces. Um, so this was a bread pan um, and a big cup. And I just, I couldn't pass them up. I'd, so $6.29 for the set of these two. So, yeah. So I just thought, what a, I don't know the story. I don't know who sells them. I really, I don't go to regular stores very much. So I can't tell you who sells them. And so if you know, are they a QVC or are they, uh, I don't know who sells them. So let, let me know if you know. So I'm not sure if I should have picked these two up or not, but, um, these were both $3.29 and now they're Magnolia Homes um, line. I see it says Magnolia. Um, I, the, you know, of course, you know, this is like the IOD transfers, the stamping that we all do. But the sad thing about it is they both are chipped. So with when it comes to chipping, um, 
sand it, clean it, let it dry. You can use some of the CA glue with a little bit of paint. And uh, so hopefully I will remember to show you that in the video. Um, I'll probably, I don't think I'll resell these. Maybe I, maybe I'll hold on to them for myself. I'm not positive. They match my crockery. I like that they have wording on it, but I'll try to remember to share that with you, how to fix a little chip like that. Cause I, I don't want to paint over it. I like that. I like that as is. Now, talking about crockery. Now this had just rolled out on the cart too. Oh my goodness. So this was 1029 as the lid. You now you know when you see these dispensers, there is never a lid. It's got a beautiful handle. It's very heavy. Um oh okay. I, I knew there was a stamp somewhere on it. So the stamp is behind it. It's just beautiful. Now I don't usually do blue, so this is definitely something I would um, resell in my booth. So now we can plop that over the right way. So yeah, it had the lid. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Every time I seem like I see one of these in the thrift store, you do not see the lids. Look at that. Okay. I don't want to break it. The brass spout on there. Oh my gosh. Beautiful, beautiful piece. So you rule of thumb three times it. So it'd be about 30 bucks for retail. And I wouldn't want to ship that because that, that baby's heavy. I, so I, I mean, I, and then I would be nervous that it would crack. So another thing that was ten twenty nine, seems like it's a new price at Goodwill, was this beautiful church lantern. Um, I like the color. I like the chippiness. It does have some dirtiness that needs to be cleaned off. So I think I can clean it up and just resell it as is. I don't really see little church ones very often. So... So the same rule of thumb, it would, this would run about $30. You know, I might put like 28 on this. Um, you know, you kind of make up, lose, make up. It, that, that's how it goes sometimes. So the Salvation Army, I had, I had to go to this one town a couple times um, that I usually only go to once in a while, once a week if I'm restocking because it's on the other side of where our, our booth is. Um, so if I'm restocking, I always go over there. So then I walked in one day and there were these three mark, I'm going to call them market baskets. You will not, $4.99 guys, $4.99. So it's got this smaller one. Um, they got some waterware in there, but I don't think anything a little antique max can't fix. So Definitely got some character going on here. Um, there's the price. There you go. Can you see it? $4.99. Crazy, right? Uh, definitely just, just a nice, oh my, and then look at how big this guy is. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with them. I don't know anything about them. There's no tags. They feel very well made. I mean... They got some little wonkiness, probably from being wet, but I still think they're beautiful. Like I always say, that perfectly imperfect. So I could not. I thought it was just going to be four ninety nine for the one basket, and then she's like, "No, all three. I'm like, "Oh, oh thank you, <laughs> thank you very much." So well, this is definitely very boho. So here we got this. <laughs> just this. I don't know. You know, I kind of feel like. When I started this journey, I was definitely the black and white farmhouse. Um, and then the more you thrift, the more you kind of like, you know, you just see the beauty in everything. And then having a booth, even though that's not how I decorate, I can resell it. I can appreciate what it looks like. So yeah, this was $5.29. Um, I don't know. There's not a tag on it that says made in Viet Vietnam. Um, but so maybe it's an Ikea piece. I, I don't know guys, but I thought it was pretty, it does need cleaned up. Um, so we'll wash it first, see if that cleans up or 
if I need to. I don't know how, I don't know how all this kind of stuff, I don't really, I don't think I'd want to sand it. Um, so we'll hopefully it'll clean up, hopefully it'll clean up. For $8.29, oh, look at this, it is so heavy. I'm hoping not to drop it on my Tentotion stuff. Oh my gosh, so it is a hummingbird, brass hummingbird with some flowers. We've got some heavy cast iron, little branch that it's on. Oh my gosh, just a gorgeous piece. I, this definitely, $8.29, that, oh yeah, that's not gonna last long. I, the animals, I think last week I showed you um, a set of deer. Those, yeah, the brass animals, they do. The brass animals sell well for me, so yeah, I won't pass them up and definitely a bird. I, that's so it's so neat with I love that with that black so sharp reminds me of that wood and black that we're doing a lot of 520 so this look at this elephant now I I love this on him I love his color he's just a happy 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 elephant oh so I would do nothing to him he's just happy he's along that same li lines of the patinas I've been using so he definitely fits into my colors I know I have some Coordination. Do you guys remember the granimals back in the day when you coordinate your animals so all your colors matched? I didn't have that close. We, we were that kind of family, but I, I definitely could appreciate everything matching. So yeah, so, so cute. So cute. For $2.29 were these set of little, now they need a bath. They are sticky, dirty, little teapots, but they're just those little, um, they open up. Both of them open up. They're so cute. Oh my goodness. So yeah, just take the stickers off, give them a nice bath. Definitely have been in the kitchen, get that spray pan, grease on them, but 229, so they're great. That was a great price. You just never know one thing's gonna run high, one thing's gonna run low. You just don't know. Now, Chris found this for me for $3.29. It is a black oil lamp. And if you noticed in my cabinet video, the one that we have in our basement where now all my iron stone are, I actually collect black lanterns for the top to go with my black globe. So yeah, it's got some. There's some bugs in it. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> oh, well, that's what happens when you throw the glass needs to be cleaned anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, I was actually, I thought it was going to be a battery operated one, but it wasn't. It's actually got a wick. So, 329. This is, I keep in this. So, so for 529, <laughs> this clock with a tag on it. <laughs> um, mitts, mitts, I don't know. Home. Um, yeah, I love clocks. I'll paint this one up. Um, I can't, these you always think can come. They are not very easy to take off and then put back on. We, early on in this career, we tried that and it was, it, it must be a machine pushing those on there. So just, we'll just tape it off to paint it that black. Um, cause the black clocks sell really well. So yeah, I love that it's like the old fashioned alarm clock. And usually like this size clock would 1822 by the time I get it painted up. 329, I did find a paperweight. It's gonna pick up the <laughs> ring light wherever I go. Oh, I see Glenn. I didn't notice Glenn's in the back giving himself a bath. That's the life of animals, you know. <laughs> so I hope you all like cat cat like cats. And yeah. Yep, yeah, that's how that's how cats are. Um <laughs> so I these always sell really well. I'm glad it was the three dollar price range because I, then I can do it under the ten bucks, and that's a quick sell for in our booth. That would be a quick sell for two twenty nine is what their coffee mugs are, and I can't pass up enamelware black, especially black. I like that it says Farm Fresh. I don't, you know, you can turn it. You, we can put some lavender in it. Um, yeah, I just this is just a nice catch all piece. Yeah, um, black and white lavender, or black and white enamelware is, yeah, my thing, my thing. 
And then let's see what we got here. $6.29 for this wooden bowl. I love the details on it. Uh, definitely will get a paint job um, because as you see, it's a little banged up or for wear. So um, not, I'm not sure which color I... Now, the, I have really good luck if I sand the inside down into the natural and restain it um, and then paint the outside black. That just, that wooden black does really well. Um, so that, that might be my option. I don't have a, I don't have a ton in this haul to make over for you all. So not that I see, I always say that and the next thing you know, the video ends up being an hour long. So, <laughs> so then for $4.29, yeah, it's a crow. It's just an old uh, laid back. <laughs> Corky, Corky sells, Corky always <laughs> sells, and I like, I like crows, they're just the old crow. Um, yeah, I'll just leave him as is. I do think there's a little bit of a chip in his foot, but I don't think that distracts from anything. It's kind of, it may be or it may not be, I don't know, maybe now that I'm feeling it, it may be how it was, because you can see it still has paint on there, so I think that's just how it was, yeah, so. At first glance, you might think it's chipped, but no, it's, that's how it was. So yes, no. Nope. Come on, another little quirky animal. Not Glenn back in there giving himself a bath. So for 529, oh, he's gray, he's cement, he's because Michigan's winter is going on too long. <laughs> so I, I don't, he was just, he is just cute. He is just cute. He is just a resell item. Um. I probably would not put 15, I'd probably go 12 on him. Um, just for a quick sale, I think he's cute. Like I said, you make, it all evens out sometimes, you know, I know rule of thumb, because 15 seems a little high to me for him, but. Remember, I always say, I don't want to dust my booth. I want to take new stuff in. I want to go shopping every day and find stuff to share with you all, but I don't want to dust my booth. I'll dust my shelves on my booth, but I don't want to dust the stuff at my booth. So now at the community thrift, which they go by um, tag numbers, mini, oh my, look at it, it's mini cast iron. Now I usually don't pick up much cast iron, but I think like, they were hardly anything. I don't remember the prices, but uh, yeah, I just, you know, they were just, they were too cute to pass up. So I don't, the hard thing is like, do I oil them and clean them up or do I leave that little rust on them and let somebody else, you know, I don't know, but I thought they were cute. So I didn't pass them up. And then I did find talking about some cast iron. So they were a set of these, oh my goodness. So there's three of them. Same thing, three of them, there's three of them, three of them. Um, so they were $5.29 for the set of three. And I can definitely, if I run across another hall tree that, you know, like a coat tree standing, um, I usually always have, I'm down to one right now. So I'm on the lookout for another one. Cause the one booth I hang aprons from and the other booth I hang purses or bags if I find any, but, um, so now I'm down to one, so I could probably use another one. We'll, we'll see, we'll see if God will give me one. <laughs> if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, because sometimes they don't have necessarily the nicest hooks on them, so these would be nice to change them out. And talking about odds and end pieces, so for $4.29, I found a bag of legs. Yes, you know, I'm not gonna pass those up, so it's a set of Yep, set of legs, four legs. So these are always nice to have in our stash. So if we want to rise something up, because you, yeah, because sometimes the old, older pieces of furniture are shorter. Um, and when you have, I'm the shortest in my family, and you have two family members that are at the six four range, furniture seems short, short. And I know there are short people, but we tend to, I don't know, there's just something about rising furniture up and seeing it on their, seeing legs, it's just, I don't know. It just makes you stop. This bowl is a resin bowl, but it was $7.29, and I would just paint this up black. Dough bowls like this, um, they still sell really well. This is a great size, great size. Um, so for $7.29, yes. So yeah, I definitely could get painting this up, sealing it in the 24, maybe, maybe even 28 out of it. So 
that's not terrible. Uh, one last piece, and it may not seem very exciting, but I was very excited. It is a like a plant stand. So I have thrifted, if you watched me for a long time, you know that I like to um, thrift baskets or buy them from the Dollar General, which now the Dollar Generals have gone to where I can't, because $10 baskets do doable, but then you got one that's more than $10 is not doable. Um, so yeah, so for $4.29, I picked this up because I have one $10 basket left from the Dollar General to make a blanket basket riser. So what I do is I put a, the basket on top of here, put this and sew your pillows and what you're, they're off the ground. So yeah, definitely. So I was happy to run across this. So yes, that is, yep, I'm looking around, double checking. So that is it for this week's thrift haul. So let's get into the makeovers. Before we get into our thrift haul makeovers, I just want to give a big thank you to you who sent me bingo cards and the awesome Bible. Oh my goodness, I am just overwhelmed and humbled by your generosity. I have been looking for these items for so long. I had a couple larger pieces that made their way to the workshop already, so I forgot to show them in the hall, but I am happy to share this beautiful clock with you all. Ten at twenty nine was its price, and yes, it is broken, but what a large beauty this is. I know the ten twenty nine price tag, nothing we can do about it, you guys, but I definitely think just taking the mechanism off, it's not cost efficient to replace that big of a mechanism and just you know, leaving it that perfectly imperfect as is. <laughs> did a flip over on the back to see if I could just pull the mechanism out but then I got distracted by the uh, duct tape wire yeah this wire is never good to use it's too has too many strings and it always scratches your wall that's why we use fencing wire <laughs> so yeah so I'm gonna get this removed So the mechanism would not just pull out. So, yep, <laughs> hammer it is. I'm like, come on, I don't want you just sticking out there. I just want you to be wall decor. So a few hammers and voila, I got that part off. And I know I get distracted by the backs very easily, but when I'm flipping an item, I'm trying to sell it as newly made over. I want the back size to be as nice as the front side. So removing the felt pan pads, and then it had a couple of staples on there that will also scratch your wall so i don't want those on and then i'm gonna go ahead and give it a fresh coat of paint and seal it in with some polycrylic i just can't help myself along with putting a new wire on it And there was this beautiful mirror. Oh my goodness, I was just attracted by all that beautiful detail that I could probably do some patinas on it. I don't feel as if it needs a paint job. It's in wonderful condition. It had that $10.29 price tag on it also. So now I got this flipped over because I knew that there was a wire hanging from it and it's that same type of wire. See what I mean? The, all those fray really bad and that's what scratches up your paint on your wall behind. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that and I was going to replace it. But then there on the back of it, there is a tag that says do not hang by wire. I'm not really sure why not. It's really not. The metal is very actually flimsy. It's not as strong as I would prefer that it would be for the 1029 price tag that I paid for it but I will leave the do not put with wire tag on it remove the whatever the store tag was and leave it as is I won't be replacing the wire just for safety sakes 
I am going to go ahead and use these three rub and buffs. So I have the copper, I have a goldy antique, and then I also have the silver. And I love layering the three of them on top of each other. So yep, just simple of a Dollar Tree stencil brush has been working out just fine for me. So just a really, really dry, very dry brush, a very soft touch. Just let it hit on those details. Unfortunately, the marks just did not wash off of this beautiful tray, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a light sanding with some 220 sandpaper. I get it all sanded. There's just some splits, some holes between, I think this was might have been made with some reed, but I just, I don't like that there's holes in there that can catch stuff so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put some ca glue and take some of our sawdust that we have here in the workshop plenty of that and then just fill in those holes put the glue in push as much of the sawdust as i can in there let it dry and then sand it again I reseal that in with something and I'm just going to go with the Verithane Natural Clear Wax just to seal it on. I didn't want to spray it with the poly. I don't want to change the color. This will look like it changes the color at first, but it'll soak in and it'll go back to the original color because I did not touch the other side of this. So it is always funny when you go to start cleaning the item to get it ready to like what I thought was just going to be some antiquing wax. There is a little brokenness here and there on these little baskets that I thought, okay, let me get them cleaned off. Let me get them detagged. And then I will deal with those. First off, the larger basket actually has a double reed as the handle, piece of wood as the handle, and it's kind of kicking off, making it seem like it's a little broken. So all I'm going to do is stick some CA glue in there put a little accelerator on it, hold it for 15 seconds and we should good, be good to go and it'll just look like it is one solid that's supposed to be there. And I'm not sure why I did not film this, but I was on the way that it goes up onto the side. Some of the little nails had come loose, so I just rebranded those down and made sure that they were smooth on the opposite side underneath to make sure that they weren't going to be sticking out, cutting onto anybody's surface that they were going to put these on. So I don't know why I didn't film that, but I did tighten that back down also. And now I'm just going plain simply going in with some antiquing wax, and that just quickly solves that watermark problems. So what I thought was just going to be just this is all I was going to be doing. <laughs> nope, there was a little bit other fixes to do. Just minimal. They all take time, but it just makes it well worth it. Throughout this week, I did not show it in my haul. It happened when I was in the process of thrift haul and sharing with you all that I had a friend bring over a box of stuff that she no longer wanted and just wanted me to go through it and keep what I wanted and then donate what I didn't want. And then my friend Kathy, yes, again, she had a little bit more of her mom's estate for me to go through. So I thought I'm already in the process of making over items. So you are going to see some bonus items here because I'm in the process. And a lot of the items that I'm doing in this grouping are all going to stay black and then along with like this lantern this was part of a little weekend trip that we went to a flea market and a couple 
thrift stores outside of town. I didn't have any video of that. I shared it on some Instagram and Facebook and TikTok posts. If you do not follow me there, you should because sometimes I post things there that you don't see here on YouTube. And this little lantern just is faded and needs a little bit of livening up. But unfortunately, I can't take out the glass, so I'm going to have to hand paint this one. Hopefully I can thrift some more mug tree holders that this is my last one that needs to be done. The black one, I have two white ones, but nobody wanted the white ones. That's okay. I need a place to display my mugs anyway. So yes, I need another black one in our booth. When it comes to this clock, I'm just going to tape off the face. As I said, during the thrift haul, I cannot remove it. So I want to protect that face. So I'm just going to use some two inch dollar general masking tape to tape off that face and then I'll just take an exacto knife and go around the circle. As I will be painting the back of this piece I also need to tape off the mechanism and where the battery is. I really wanted to leave this natural wood but as you see it's got some burn marks in it so now I have to paint it. For this lantern, I'm just going to go in and hand paint it with a wet wipe in hand because I'm not going to spend the time taping it off. I'm just going to touch up the outer and then the door of this lantern and then the inside of the bottom because I can't really get to the corners in the inside with some Waverly ink chalk paint. After I got both sides of all my objects done, I'm going in with some spray polycrylic and getting that sealed in. For my two dough bowls, the resin one that I'm working on right now and the wood one, I'm going to go in with a little bit of steel wool. Just make sure that everything is nice and smooth. I'm going to open up that polycrylic and then I'm going to finish them all, both off with some Waverly Antiquing Wax. Now, when it comes to the polycrylic on the lantern, I can't spray it or the glass would be all <laughs> polycrylic. So what I'm going to go in and I'm just going to have one of those sponge dabbers and then I'm just going to very gingerly wipe it on all that. That is, you need that top coat because that top coat is going to seal that black paint in. So I'll take the time to do it. So now it's to this bowl riser, riser bowl, bowl, bowl on a, yeah, bowl on a pedestal. So anyway, yes, I need to sand the inside. And now I did not say this was an easy task. So first I started off with my mouse black and decker sander, but it just wasn't getting that angle. So I need to do 
to switch over to our orbital sander and then I needed to remember to take the guard off the orbital sander so I could get it but uh, it does it does do what you need it to do but yes it not is not an easy task um, definitely gives you an arm workout as you're holding that sander up there to get all that stain and paint I think it is off <music> So now that I've got all that removed, I did that with an 80 grit on there to remove the product. So now I'm going back in with a 220 sandpaper just by hand, just making sure that it's nice and smooth. That I have the base painted and sealed and I'm going to work now I really thought that I was going to paint this outer rim black after I got it done but it's such a clean and I think it'll actually blend in with the stain so I'm gonna leave it alone so I'm gonna start off with my watered down Waverly antiquing mix that I mix a quarter cup of antiquing wax in with a spoonful of ink we really chalk paint that just takes down that red red I know that this wood is going to be really dry so sometimes this is all that it takes and it doesn't need any antiquing wax or sometimes it needs some antiquing wax so I rather do the watered down mixture first especially on really dry raw wood let that dry and I absolutely love how it looks so I'm just going to go in with some polycrylic and get that all sealed in So I did love this little crow, but once I started looking at it, it had some dents, some missing paint. Now I can tell that it was sun faded, definitely. So I do want to freshen it up. I don't think that my hand is steady enough to make those nice lines to bring this back to the two-tone crow it was. So all I'm going to do is go in with some white wax and I actually I added a little bit of the white linen and chiffon rust-oleum paint in with it so it is really white so I'm going to go ahead and brush it on put it in those little details of the area and wipe a lot of it off. Adding the paint to it really made it kind of stick on the areas I didn't really want. I tried misting a little bit with the water bottle to see if I could get some of it to come off. Oh, but not so well. So I ended up, I'm sorry, yet again, I didn't video after I got it all waxed and where I wanted it to be. I took some black rub and buff on the features I wanted to leave out shining. I definitely love how it turned out after the rub and buff. First found this clock when we were on our thrifting weekend and it's just a resin clock it looks like by the tag on the bottom it's a home interiors but it definitely has some beautiful details that i really like so i'm just gonna get it washed up get that tag taken off and tape off that face because nope i wasn't able to remove the face Oh, so let's pop all these beautiful details. Now, you saw the little boy and girl I did in this copper. I absolutely love it. But I've been playing a little bit with the copper and the gold. And oh my gosh, do they accentuate each other. So that's what I'm going to do again. Just using one of those Dollar Tree stencil brushes to apply it. Wait, I was going to leave these owls 
all black so i got them painted up i got it polycrylic i absolutely loved them and then i started to do that copper with that gold so okay yep i'm gonna add some to the details on these beautiful owls i couldn't help myself Thought I'd give your eyes a moment's rest from always seeing black. Oh yes, I have this little galvanized hanging type of olive bucket. It's got that screening that reminds me of an olive bucket. But it's just kind of blasé. Uh, but I don't want to paint the whole thing with the slats on it. I can't envision it black or white to do the enamel wear look on it. So I'm just going to take some of the patinas because the features on it are the same color as the metal itself so i was just going to go through and add a little bit of the patina now these patinas as you add them they are quite bright at first but as they oxidize and they dry they change color so i'm going to start off right with my brightest one which is the turquoise color and then i'm just there again just using one of those stencil brushes from the dollar tree store to apply it for the label area, I'm going to have to switch over to a little bit smaller one or I'm going to have the whole surface area covered. So at first I started off without tape, which wasn't too bad, but once I started layering off four of my colors, I did end up at taping off the area. But So hopefully I can make this pop. Now we're going on to the rust color. And there again, the two are going to start to mix. They're going to make an aged greenish color as I add them together. I find the thing with the patinas is you just keep mixing them together until you love them. So I'm also going to go on little corners here to pop a little bit more aged because I really do have a lot of fun playing with these patinas, but I do know a little bit goes a long way. Yes, the Dollar General has the birds back in for the season. They are still a dollar. Yay! So I am going to share with some that are new to our channel that have never seen the Dollar, Tree, Dollar General birds made over. So, yep, but first off, I'm going to start taking off the tags and we're going to get these sprayed up with a base of black. Yes, I did seal these in with polycrylic. That keeps that black paint where I want it. So now we're going to go in and I am going to give them a cement look with some textured paint. So we got 
50% is going to be baking soda. And then the gray I have left right now is steel. So that's pretty dark. So I'm going to do a 50-50 ratio with the Waverly white chalk paint and then uh, some of the steel chalk paint just to make a lighter gray. Now after my texture paint is dry, I'm going to go ahead and seal it in with some more polycrylic. Now if I have an option when I'm at the Dollar General store picking out the birds, I pick out the ones that have the most details in them. And the blue jays seem to have the most details to me, so that's why I chose those. So when I go in to do this step where I'm taking some of the white wax and I'm adding a little bit of the Waverly white paint to it, <laughs> I learned my lesson from the Rustoleum on my crow earlier that I thought, oh, I'm going to change it up and add this paint to it. Maybe it won't dry quite as fast, but I want to whiten it up just a little bit much. Sometimes my white wax is, I've had it open and closed so many times, I do feel like it's yellowing just a wee bit. So I want to add a little bit of paint to it. Here's one of the reasons I always start off with that black base and seal it in. See, you can see a little bit of that black paint underneath. It's so unpredictable sometimes when you're making over an item like this to know if the paint is going to rub off or not. So, yep, I will always start off with my black base. And yeah, even I guess just adding the paint to it just made that wax thicker and hard to remove, I guess. So... Well, I don't know. I mean, I still like the overall look, and I don't mind the black showing through. I would have mind it if it was the blue. So are you hanging in there? Now we're on to our whites. So this mailbox was brand new in box. I got it from Kathy's mom's estate. And then she even had the idea of painting it white and making the word mail pop. But I have to clean it. It always has some type of residue on it, even if it's new in the box. <laughs> and of course, it's been sitting around. And then also, it's going to give my paint something to grab onto. If I just tried to paint this white, it just wouldn't have the same effect. I still need to prime it and paint it black with that Rust-Oleum spray paint. Now that the polycrylic is dry, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the Rust-Oleum paint again. Now, this is a mixed can that I have. It has a ratio of white linen and the chiffon in it, and that kind of takes down that really bright white of the linen so this is a can i always have mixed so i'm just going to apply it and it's probably going to take me about three coats to cover and you see i saved the inside and the little inner lid by taping it off so yep i'm just going to have to paint it i love the way that the rust-oleum chalk paint west distress so that's perfect for these details on this mailbox
Now, do you remember I just said that I love using this Rust-Oleum chalk paint because of how easily it wets distress, but if I would try to put another coat on without spritzing the first coat down, I would just be taking it off. So I just have a mister bottle, mist the whole surface area, and then very gingerly put on the second coat. And I have to do the same thing when I go to apply the third coat because white is white, it very seldom will cover in two coats. And after my third coat is dry, I'm gonna go in and I just have a wet wipe, whatever, wet wipe, wet rag. And you definitely wanna hold most of it in your hand because if it lays on where you do not want it to be distressed, it'll still take the paint off. <laughs> so I'm going in with just my fingertip on those areas that are details, those little, these little framed in lines and the letters of the mail and just work it. So after I've got it wet once, I go back and wipe it again, then it starts to come off. And then I have a paper towel because what will happen is as you're wet distressing it kind of leaves a cloudy gray on top of it and i just dab it with the paper towel and i'm down to that black my paint is completely dry from wet distressing it if you do not let it dry and you move on to seal it in with polycrylic you will have some crackle going on lesson learned so yes make sure that that is good and dry before sealing your paint in So now I have this little duck and this was from that thrifting week and also the Salvation Army we had stopped to. If you bought five items, it was like $5 or something, $5.99. I can't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, so yeah, I'm going to try to find five items that I can make over and this duck was one of them. Actually, at this Salvation Army that was probably about an hour and a half away, we ran into another viewer, and she was there visiting, going to a Christian comedian. So I hope you enjoyed your event. As I'm rambling on here, yep, as I'm just letting the video pit play, yes, I want to try the crackle technique on this duck. So paint black, sealing with polycrylic, and now I have just Dollar Tree glue. And it need, it's a little bit on the thicker side because it's down to the bottom of it. Every time you open something up, it starts to dry out. So I added just a little bit of water. So I'm just going to brush it on. I've done flat surfaces, but I have yet to do rounded little animals. I definitely think it'll give it that aged look. So I think the thinner you put it on, the smaller your crackle is. And nope, I haven't tried the hairspray technique so far. This is working out and I still got a whole nother bottle of glue to work through. This time I just let the glue set up on its own. I had plenty to do in the workshop waiting for the glue to dry. You just want it to dry just a little bit to have a little crusty top so that it doesn't mix completely in with the paint. So I'm just using my Kills Paint and Primer, which is my favorite white. It's not too bright, it's not too creamish. I love this white, so I'm just going to apply one coat on top of this. Oh, 
I just set this little ducky right off to the side, let it just dry natural, no blow dryer, no heat gun, nothing to accelerate it, and look how beautiful it is cracking. Now I didn't put any of the cracking on the bottom, I made sure that I covered up, made sure my bottom was clean if I needed a little bit of the ink, chalk paint to touch it up, and now I'm just sealing this all in with some polycrylic. little bird house was in the box that my friend Bev dropped off for me to go through. She didn't want to have to have a garage sale. Uh, we all know how much garage sales are a lot of work, but I still have one once a year whether I want to or not because I go and buy too much stuff and not everything goes through my booth sales, so I still need to have one. But I am happy when somebody brings me a box of goodies to go through. It's like Christmas, so I definitely love this little bird house, but you know I'm a black and white girl, so I'm going to go ahead and paint the roofs of these little birdhouses black along with the porches. That Waverly ink chalk paint is dry. I'm going to go back in with 150 sandpaper and distress the top of those roofs to match the base of those birdhouses. We'll get this sealed in with some polycrylic. Isn't it funny how one item will remind you of another item that you had stored away that you needed to do? So that little birdhouse reminded me of this big birdhouse that I had thrifted last year that, yes, it, and it was missing a part. So I had been waiting for the part to be able to make this birdhouse over. So actually in the stash, of stuff that Kelly gave me, the viewer that gave me all those wonderful gifts were these finials. Oh my goodness, so I was so excited. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them, but it was late in the season and I wasn't into doing birdhouses anymore, so it got set off to the side. So I have an idea, this is a major overhaul for this birdhouse. So I need to take out the Spanish moss grass that's coming out of these fake holes. So the holes only go through so far. So yes, so I need to try to scrape out as much of that that I can. Along with moving, removing what twigs are used as purchase because there's only half of them there. So I'm going to have to come up with another idea for the purchase, but yep, I need to get as much of this taken out that I can. Now the bat bottom half of all three of the roofs are not attached. They had little staples that this is a thin little metal that they just went through. And if you lift them up, they actually didn't even go into the wood. So I need to come up with another plan. I tried bread nails, I tried staples, but everything just went right through the metal. So I just went into Chris's stash of yeah, and I got myself some uh, roofing nails and just hammered them into the bottom. That way it is, it is attached. So now, there we go again. I keep not turning on my camera this episode. <laughs> so anyway, yes, I, yep, and now it looks like it's a haunted house, doesn't it? But yes, I'm going to start off with my classic black base sealed in with polycrylic. And yes, you do see red in my hand. So this is Dixie's Bell's Barn Red, and I did that one little table, little cubby table that hasn't sold yet, but I think $125 is a great price for that, but it just takes the right person to come along and want it out of our booth. So anyway, I absolutely love this red in color. So what I'm doing here is this is just going to be one of those hidden colors that's going to peek through because I'm going to do that same white crackle effect, but I'm just going to do random splotches of this Red Barn Dixie Bell paint.
I don't think I could be com as confident this time not getting paint on my roof. So I definitely went, took the time to tape it off. So now I'm going in with that glue again, and I'm just doing a thin coat of glue on. I did have to add a little bit of water to it, not too much, um, only to help it go on a little bit better. So I'm just trying to make a nice, even coat. So when we go to put our white paint, over and it crackles, we should be able to see the black and the red through it. Let my glue dry for a bit until it got that where it wasn't just completely wet, it has a little bit of a film on top of it so that it's not just the paint and the glue are not just mixing in together. So it's supposed to be you just go over it once <laughs> if I can. I'm trying. But so I'm trying to go up and then I'm trying to go down and meet in the middle here. So we'll see how that works. But I do have quite a bit. It's supposed to be one coat on it. So I do have quite a bit of paint on my brush. This is definitely one of those projects you have to trust the process. I threw this on my Instagram story to ask if this was a hot mess or potential. Most people saw potential. I think one person said it was a hot mess, but with a, a laughing emoji. But yes, I definitely have to trust the process and let it completely dry. Because if you start messing with it, all you're going to do is goop up your paint. Life lesson le <laughs> learned from the first couple times I've tried this. So now after it is completely dried and I actually let it dry overnight to make sure that it was good and dry and it's got that beautiful crackle on it, I'm just taking some sandpaper, making sure that there's no big glumps, there's no anything. To, I know it's a birdhouse, but I still want it to be smooth. And if I feel like some of the ways that I had to swipe my paintbrushes, I could kind of see like going on the side of the roof, that angle. I'm going to go back in and take some more paint and just fix it. It can always be painted. If I hated it, I could just paint right over it. But I think it's very fun, especially on a birdhouse. I love, 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 love seeing that red and black underneath there. So now I need to attach the finial to that metal rod that's hanging at the top of, st sticking out of the top of these birdhouses. So it's a two-part epoxy, so you mix it together. And I know it says JB Weld Wood. I don't really know why. Um, we bought these at a hardware store that was going out of business. But so far I have been using it and it works just the same as the other JB Weld. So you mix it together. You got to work fast because it does start to set up. And so I just filled that little hole of the finial, put it is look at that god wink moment it slides right on top i love the rust patina i protected that rod when i was spraying it so that i did not change that color and now i'm just going to put some masking tape on it for its clamp to hold it in place now to replace the little twigs that were used as the purchase i'm using these vintage looking square nails that Chris had picked up at Habitat a while ago. Perfect replacement. I don't even have to re-drill a hole. They fit in there. So I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue and put, stick them in. That I have all those little details finished. I'm going to seal this whole thing in with some polycrylic. This is my last project, I promise. So this makeover, I couldn't help, but this was part of some of Kathy's mom's things also. And I thought this is perfect going into the spring season. Who doesn't want to freshen up their outdoor items? This is metal, it is beautiful. Yes, a little bit of rust goes a long way, but as we the weather goes here in Michigan, it just keeps eating it away and eating it away until you, it, yeah, it just starts to break. So it is good if you can to try and um, fix it, try to get that rust off so it doesn't eat all the way through the metal. So first, unfortunately, the screws had seized up. So Chris was unable just to remove them, even with the help of WD-40, it just, they were stuck. So I ended up having to cut them off. 
And I know not everybody has the capability of that. I could have just left them on. But you know, Chris is a determined man. And so once he's committed, he's going He's going to follow all the way through. That's just how we are. So now, unfortunately, he's using some metal drilling bits to drill the hole. And just like we did that chair not too long ago, he's taking a sanding tool that you use on your drill and getting most of the rust off that he can, making it nice and smooth. And rust is just like... An infection it just keeps growing and like I said it's beautiful but eventually it will just eat through the whole thing and there won't be anything left even though I shortened this into just a blurb of how long it took him to do that I went to grab my mask to spray for my protection and then I dropped the whole tray under the ground we have cement <laughs> and it actually broke it so I did not show you but jb weld to the rescue yes i jb welded it back together and it fixed it so i need to do a video of things you need to have in your workshop to fix things because jb weld is definitely one of them so now i'm going to use this primer on this to hopefully seal in that rust prevent it no i did not get all we did not get all the rust off we're not that type of refinishers that's a whole different set of tools and a whole different process but this will work from season to season or a couple years down the road i don't know about you all but it seems like every few years we have to paint our outdoor furniture and protect it from the rust and our i can't even tell you i think i know that i've had our outdoor furniture set it's got to be going on 15 years from doing that just I'm not tired of it. I absolutely love it. And we probably will do a video here soon of us refinishing that for yet another another year to get some more longevity out of it. But yes, this is definitely going to seal in this rust, hide this rust, and prevent it from leaking through my paint. Now I chose to use the Rust-Oleum chalk paint because I wanted to be able to go in and distress and show off some of the fun details of this little bird bath. And then after I got it the way I wanted it in my distress stand, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry before, because it's chalk paint, you don't want it to crackle. If you want it to crackle, then put your polycrylic on wet, but I don't want it to crackle, so I waited for it to dry, and then after the polycrylic is dry, I can reattach my birds, and you definitely would not have had to take the birds off, but as I said, Chris was committed. <laughs> Thank you for watching today's video and as always give me a comment of what your favorite item that I found was along with the one that I made over. Thanks again for watching today's video and as always if you are part of a YouTube family thank you so much for your kind compliments, your supportive words, and always giving our videos a thumbs up. Really helps YouTube know that you like this kind of content and they'll keep recommending us. And if you're new and you're checking out our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys. Bye.